Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Good morning, and welcome to you all. Welcome to Elizabeth's family, as we come together this morning to commend her soul to God, as we journey with her on this final journey. We gather in prayer, we gather in hope also, of the central centrality of our faith that we too will share in the resurrection from the dead. We welcome Elizabeth's sons, Liam and Tommy, and to her sisters, Anna and 
Anna, Mary, daughters-in-law Anne and Maureen, grandchildren Rachel, Connor and Anna, sis extended family and many friends. I also welcome those who are joining us this morning via the live stream. Elizabeth had many interests in her life and those interests and symbols, some of them, are placed on the table beside her coffin, the knitting needles representing her love of knitting, her prayer book which was important to her life, and a picture also representing her cheerfulness and great sense of humour also. She cheered up many people throughout her life. In life, Elizabeth cherished the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet her with these words of eternal life, come blessed of my Father. In baptism, Elizabeth received the sign of the cross. May she now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our failings and ask God, our Saviour, for pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Elizabeth, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Now I invite you to be seated for the readings, which will be read for us by Rachel. First reading, a reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they did appear to die. They're going looking like a disaster. They're leaving us like annihilation, but they are in peace. If they experienced punishment as men see it, their hope was rich with immortality. Slight was their affl affliction, great would their blessings be. God has put them to the test and proved them worthy to be with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. Those who trust in him will understand the truth. Those who are faithful will live with him in love. For grace and mercy await those he has chosen. The word of God.
Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Hope is not deceptive because the love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit which has been given us. We are still helpless when at his appointed moment Christ died for sinful men. It is not easy to die even for a good man, though of course for something, someone who really worthy, a man might be prepared to die. But what proves that God loves us is that Christ died for us while we were still sinners. Having died to make us righteous, it is likely that we, he would now fail to save us from God's anger. When we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, we were still enemies. Now that we have been reconciled, surely we may count on being saved by the life of his son. Not merely because we have been reconciled, but because we are filled with joyful trust in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have already gained our reconciliation. The word of the Lord. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that, even now, whatever you ask of God, he will grant you. Your brother, said Jesus to her, will rise again. Martha said, I know he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she said. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who was to come into this world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to your Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. As human beings, it's true to say that we all cling to hope in life. Perhaps in times of difficulty, trial and struggle, that it is hope that gives us that strength to continue on. Hope is such an important virtue in our life it can sustain us in so many different ways. We heard the hope in the second reading read to us by Rachel this morning, the hope of our faith, the hope of the resurrection from the dead, the hope that we too will share in that great gift that we inherited on the day of our baptism, hope that sustains us each and every day. The longevity of life doesn't ease the pain of saying goodbye, letting go of a cherished family member, a mother, a grandmother, a sister, an aunt, perhaps a friend, cherished in life and loved by many. But today we are consoled in the hope of our faith that we too will share in that great gift that Jesus has offered his very life for us. As the gospel passage reminds us that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. 
The Paschal candle this morning burns brightly. It reminds us of that central aspect of our faith that we celebrate on Easter Saturday night. As the tomb was found to be empty, Jesus had risen from the dead. We too will share in that same hope and that same faith. We too will share in the resurrection from the dead. Today we commend to Almighty God the soul of Elizabeth. Her earthly journey has come to an end, but her eternal journey in life is only beginning. A life which began in Ducat's town outside Carlow on the Feast of All Saints in 1930, 23. A long life, a life lived to the full. She grew up with her parents, Thomas and Catherine, in Ducat's Grove, but she became known to many people not as Elizabeth but as Sissy, known and loved wide and far. Sissy went to school in Carlo, grew up in her childhood years, cherishing Carlo very much, a place that remained very much in her heart throughout her life. It was while in Dublin that she met a young man from Trim, James Fay, and both Sissy and James were married together in Carlow. They submitted their life to one another in a mutual bond of love, friendship, companionship that sustained them for many decades in life. Sissy and Jim were blessed with two sons, Liam and Tommy, whom Sissy cherished and adored each day of her life. It's true to say that Sissy was very much a homebird. She never travelled too far from her home. She was happiest most probably being at home with her family, with her husband Jim, living in Carlo, Kiltail, Selbridge, and for the last number of years, in Castle Manor, home in Cavan, a place where Sissy received great care, devotion, and dedication. Sissy had an immense interest and love of music. She enjoyed a good sing song and enjoyed the traditional music and the ballads. And of course, if the word Carlo was in the lyrics, it made it all the more enjoyable. Such was her love of Carlo. She enjoyed the garden, tending to the flowers, spending time in the outdoors. Her faith was also important to Sissy, traveling to Lourdes on one occasion with her sister May, and of course, the visits to Knock were always welcome. Jim and Sissy traveled around Ireland a number of times, but they never went too far from their home. They were happy there, spending those times together, those cherished memories, those happy moments. Sissy, as many of you experienced, had a great sense of humor in our life. She enjoyed a joke and cheered up so many people, put a smile on faces, perhaps, when things were not going so well. Sissy's grandchildren brought great joy to her to Rachel, Anna, and to Connor, you were very important to her in her life. In recent years, as Sissy experienced declining health, she amazed many people with her memory of the songs from decades ago, songs that she could repeat word by word. It was a great gift that Sissy had. But as I mentioned, there was a special place in Sissy's heart throughout her life for Carlo. No matter where she was, Carlo was very much there, in her blood, in her breath, in her life. She enjoyed the music, the knitting, the sing-along, sharing a laugh and a joke, making people smile. And it is those memories that even in death, they cannot remove them from us. We share those memories. We share those laughs. We give thanks to God for Sissy's long life. 
we commend her to God as she begins a new journey in life, a journey to our heavenly home, to be reunited with her parents, Thomas and Catherine, and her siblings. We take comfort in her faith. We take comfort in hope, hope that Sissy will continue on in life to her eternal reward, which she received on the day she was baptized. God love you, Sissy, and may you have a safe journey home. I invite you to stand for the prayers of the faithful and I invite Catherine to please come forward. Let us in faith call upon God, the Almighty Father, who raised Christ the Son from the dead, as we pray for the salvation of the living and the dead. Um, Sissy touched the lives of all of us in a very special way. In her great humor, kindness, and inspiration, she was an example to each one of us. May we strive to imitate her virtues and so play our part in making the world a better place. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, we ask your blessing today on all those who are seriously ill, especially those sick with the virus. Draw close to them and their families and bring them healing, light, and peace. Bless and strengthen the family and friends and all who care for the sick and dying. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the nurses and staff at Castle Manor Nursing Home, who looked after Sissy with such love, care and compassion, especially during her final days, may God continue to bless and strengthen them in their work. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For Sissy's many relatives, friends and neighbours, who are also mourning and sadly cannot express their sympathy in the normal ways. We pray in thanksgiving for their love and support, and we pray that they too will find healing and, and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of Sissy's deceased relatives and friends, we remember especially our beloved husband, Jim. May they now be joined together in everlasting life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. In the midst of our pain, we pray that God will grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pause in a moment of silence as we offer our own personal prayers. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We remember in prayer this morning the repose of the souls of Sissy's parents, Thomas and Catherine, to her deceased siblings and the deceased members of the Murphy and Fay families. May their souls and the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Almighty God, in confidence we offer you our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. We now have the offertory procession with the gifts of bread and wine brought forward by Anna and Rachel.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you the sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Elizabeth, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we say the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You have set Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and, recognizing the sacrificial victim, 
by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance which are elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, but blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, which our servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all of the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Elizabeth, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you as are passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes, for seeing you, our God, as you are. We shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from our evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
for the distribution of Holy Communion. I will go to the front of the church first of all, and then to the side, and then I will go to the middle of the church.
let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our sister Elizabeth may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Sissy, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Sissy again and enjoy her friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. And now sprinkle Sissy's coffin with holy water as a symbol of the sacrament of baptism and the gift of eternal life. And we honor her coffin with incense. <coughs> Saints of God, come to our aid, hasten to meet our angels of the Lord. Receive our soul and present her to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive our soul and present her to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive our soul and present her to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Sissy in the sure and certain hope that, together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Sissy in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. On behalf of Father Paul and myself and the parish community of Trim and Boards Mill, we offer our deepest prayers, thoughts and sympathies to Sissy's family, to her sons Liam and to Thomas, Tommy, and to her sister Anna Mary, to her daughter-in-law Anne and to Maureen, and to her grandchildren Rachel, Connor and Anna, to her sister-in-law Betty, nephew, nieces, relatives and friends. And also we think today of the community in Castle Manor home who was so much part of Sissy's life where she received such care and devotion and I know that Sissy's family are immensely grateful for those years that she spent in Castle Manor. 
as we heard the beautiful song sang by Maria, Our Lady of Knock, we heard the words, the golden rose. And Sissy was the golden rose in many of your lives. She brought joy, happiness, and cheer with her sense of humor. May she continue to bring you that joy and happiness, as today we give thanks to God for her life. May she bless you in the days and the weeks ahead. In peace, let us bring Sissy to her place of rest. <laughs>